Hi, so today we are going to be talking about the vector and parametric equations of a plane. This is going to be our last unit, and if you just want to take a quick look at the unit overview, we're talking about planes, planes, intersection of planes, or line and plane, intersection of two planes, intersection of three planes, and then uh, an algebraic technique we're going to work on at the end to make some of this work a little easier. For today's lesson, I think it's probably a good idea to get GeoGebra if you have your computer with you. Um, you, you don't need it, but I think it will help if uh, you can follow along. So you can go to geogebra.org slash download, geogebra.org slash download, and that will bring you to this page here. I would recommend you get GeoGebra Classic 5. Just hit download and it will appear down here at 65 megs download it and install it. The first part of this unit is simply about trying to understand what creates a plane. What information would you need in order to specify a plane? We know that a plane is a two-dimensional surface that exists in a three-dimensional space. It's a very good analogy as a piece of paper. Of course, a piece of paper is a three-dimensional object, but it, one of its dimensions is so thin that we don't usually think about it in those terms. And so uh, a good thing for you to try here right off the bat is, you know, if you're on, if you've got your computer, that's good. If you don't have your computer, that's fine. A couple of pencils and a marker cap or an eraser or some small object that could act as a point and then what I'd like you to do is to try to figure out what do you need, what information do you need in order to specify a plane. So when I say specify, I mean you give the person beside you a certain amount of information. Let's say, let's start with an example of two points. So two points. If you give the person beside you two points, so again, hold up like a little eraser or marker or coin or some small object, hold up two of them, and then the person beside you can take a piece of paper and attempt to see if they can hit every object you've held up, so your two points, they can only do it one way. If they can only do it one way and they can still hit every object that you've held up, you've specified a plane. If they can if you can answer it with multiple planes, multiple different pieces of paper, like I could twist my paper and I'm still contacting your two points, then you haven't specified a plane. It's not enough information. And of course, if they're unable to con you know, connect to everything that you're holding, uh, then you know, you, you, this is too much information. This does not specify a plane. So in GeoGebra, you can look at this. Uh, you just go to View and then 3D Graphics, and that will call up our... 3D axis here. And if we make two random points, so A is 1, 1, 1, let's say, and B is 2, negative 3, 4. Now, when I look at A and B, right, I can, I can see that it is possible to put a plane between these two, but it is also possible to put many other possible planes between these two. Right, I could have, uh, let's just go, and just to illustrate this point, let's make a, a vector uh, random between negative 5 and 5. It's a really good technique to use here, just to have it generate some random numbers, and you can test your theories about what would, what would work. So if I take um, these two points and this random vector, and then I create a vector that joins B to A. Oops, sorry. Of course, joining A to A isn't going to do anything. And then I can make a plane that contains A, M, and U. Now, this plane, this piece of paper, if you like, I'm able to hold it in such a way that it contacts A and B. And if you are holding up your two objects for your person beside you. And I just know you're not. I mean, I know you're just watching this, but, but you really should, right? I'm not I'm just, you know, I'm just making this stuff up. It's helpful to visualize and picture it and actually physically try. If you could see this plane, of course, contacts A and B. But if I had made M a different vector, 
right? Now we have a different plane containing A and B, different one. All of these planes I'm drawing here contain A and B, right? But none of them are the same plane. And, you know, so two points, it seems, is not enough information to create one unique plane. It keeps making different ones. Again, maybe what we can do here is we can just do a quick sequence uh, that will illustrate that there are many different possible planes that contain A and B, right? Like we just try and look at this mess. You notice that AB, if we look at it right from this direction, right, all of these planes pass through A and B. And obviously there are many different ways to hold your piece of paper that would touch both A and B. And you can see, you know, I can sort of make a variety of possibilities. But in any case, two points is clearly not enough to specify a plane. So let's write under two points, let's write not enough, not enough information could potentially be many planes. Okay, now try the exercise again, this time with three points. So obviously without a third hand, you can't really hold three objects, but place one object on your desk, hold up the other two objects. So you know, like a, whatever, a pencil, a coin. A uh, pencil is actually not the best thing. Something that looks like a point. Coin, an eraser, phone, whatever, an object. One object on the desk, hold the other two objects up in the air. Ask the person beside you, can you play can you place a piece of paper in such a way that it contacts all three? And is there only one way to hold that piece of paper? Now to go back to my uh thing, so I'll give you a second to do that while I'm just setting up the next demonstration here. And you can discuss with one another, you know, okay, so is this working? Am I only getting one or you know, am I getting uh more than one uh orientation? So let's uh, let's delete what I've got here. Let's go back for a sec. So there's A and B. And again, what we might want to do here is just make these points random. Okay, so B, another random point. C, another random point. Okay, so three random points. You can see I can just refresh them. I can create these three points. Now here, okay, if I try to make a plane containing all three of these points, it's that one and only that one. There's no other plane that could contact points A, B, and C, okay? except the one I have right here. There, there's no other plane that's going to do it, because you could, if you can look at it this way, where we kind of get them all in a line, so to speak, the plane has to go in this direction, right, in order for all three of them to be there. Any other plane will, will miss one of these points, right? So there are a million planes that contain A and C. There are a million planes that contain A and B, but there's only one that actually contains all three of them, okay? And this is what you should find in the in your physical demonstration as well. That you know, no, no matter how you hold these three things, your your um, colleague can always find a way to to touch all three, and that there's only one way to do that. Now there there is an exception to this. There is a way that you could hold all three points, and your colleague would still be able to make multiple planes. And this would, of course, happen if I were to move point B on top of one of the other points. So if I, if I make B and A the same, you notice my plane disappears because it can't compute because now we're basically in the same problem we just were. So if two of the points are the same, then that doesn't work, right? So let's go back and make uh, B a random point again. Okay, and now my plane is back because you can see that, you know, B is not on top of one of the other two points. So let's make a condition here. Three points, it specifies a plane 
as long as, and here there's a, we're going to come up with a couple of conditions. Number one, um, all three points are distinct. You know, none of them are the same point. Uh, can you think of what the other one would be? Just looking at this, is there a special place that let's let's work with point B again, or you know, again, then the in the the thing on the desk and the two things that you're holding. Let's say keep your right hand in the same place. Is there somewhere you could put your left hand that would also screw up whether or not this can be one plane? Okay, and you know if you if so take a second to think about that. And you know as you're looking here, there is one place I can put B, or rather one sort of property I can give B that is going to delete this plane. And what would happen there is if I made if I make vector AC, okay. If I put point B along that vector anywhere, then what's going to happen is all three of my points lie in a straight line and my plane is going to disappear because, uh, you know, point B is, is going to uh, just specify another vector. Uh, sorry, uh, it's just going to be collinear with the other two. So let's say we have B is equal to, uh, let's say half, uh, sorry, A. So we'll start at point A and we'll add half of vector U, right? And what this is going to do is it's going to move B directly here in between A and C. When I do that, right, now you see A, B, and C are in a straight line. And now my plane has been deleted again. Because it can't draw a plane with this information because, uh, you know, this is analogous to trying to draw a plane with only two, uh, two uh, points, right? And we already proved that you cannot draw a single plane with two points. So all three points are distinct and the points are not collinear. And in fact, the points being not collinear is in fact the same thing as, as them being distinct because of course if two points are the same then they technically are on the same line so we can kind of delete that, that quality. All we need to do is, here is say the points are not collinear and what you know a, a nice way to express that would be simply to say that uh, vector AB cannot be a scalar multiple of vector BC. Okay, and uh, if, if uh, sorry, I guess I should say, sorry, I should say not equal to, just to make sure this is clear. Okay, as long as the points are not collinear, okay, in other words, you cannot say that AB is in the same direction as BC, um, then you are, uh, you're, you're okay. You're going to specify a plane. Okay, so again, if I just go back to making B a random number again, then my plane is back, right, and no problem. Now, you could imagine if, if it accidentally or randomly places B in the, in the line between A and C, uh, like, a, like we did, my plane's going to disappear. But of course, just picking three random points, it's going to be quite unlikely that you, you end up picking them in a collinear way, right? I mean, the, the chances that you would pick B to be in between these two just randomly choosing is, is quite low. Uh, you know, it hasn't happened to us once here. We would have to do this many times for it to uh, for it to occur. So this means now we've got our first bit of information on how to create a plane. Two points is not good enough because many planes can be created. Three points is uh, perfect as long as the points are not collinear. And then let's let's attempt with four points. So let's draw another point D. And D is there. And again, you try this as a physical demonstration. So now two items on the desk represent two points. So, you know, my phone, my binder, my, a coin, whatever, an elastic band, the edge of a pencil. My hands hold up two other points in a different configuration. You should find that there is no way, at least not unless you happen to make some of them collinear, there's no way that one piece of paper is going to contact all four of those points, right? And you can kind of see, you know, my demonstration here is trying to create a D point at random and notice that it's not impossible that D could be on the plane, right? But there we go. There's a, there's a point where D happens to be on the plane. And it's because you can see D randomly was the same number as C. But for the most part, I could do this a lot. 
and I'm not expecting 